Battlefield 2042 just dropped a huge bombshell, the Battlefield Portal. This will be one of three available multiplayer experiences in the new game featuring content at launch from BF 1942, Bad Company 2, BF 3 and 2042. I was lucky enough to be shown a detailed behind the scenes presentation about this on Tuesday. It's quite complex but I'm going to break it down for you now as simple as possible. At its core think of this as a giant battlefield toy box and within that is an experience builder giving the players the options to create, share and discover. You'll be able to make your own custom servers and game modes using builder tools and a logic editor, mixing and matching content from all of those Battlefield games that I just mentioned. At launch this will feature 6 remade fan favourite maps as well as the 7 All Out Warfare maps from 2042, bringing the total to 13. The remade maps are as follows, from BF 1942 we've got Battle of the Bulge and El Alamein, from Bad Company 2, Valparaiso and Arica Harbour, and from Battlefield 3, Caspian Border and No Shark Canals. These maps are all built on the new Frostbite engine, rebuilt assets in 4K 60fps with the latest graphics and reimagined with the new tech available. For example, the 1942 maps will now feature destruction and weather effects which they didn't originally have, and Valparaiso will have a low tide version as an option to accommodate 128 players if you want to do that. All of these maps can be played with their original player counts too, and on the new consoles and PC you can run up to 128 players if you choose to. PS4 and Xbox One will be 64 players only, the same as their All Out Warfare experiences. Additionally, they said that as new content is added to the game in live service, it will also be added to Portal as well. Some of the fan favourite weapons, vehicles and gadgets have been remade too. This isn't just about maps, I've made some graphics here to showcase what will be available for those eras of games when 2042 releases. Feel free to pause the screen, screenshot and share any of this if you'd like to. They've got all the big hitters in here from the M16A3 to the Car 98, the T90, the Havoc. I'm just so glad that they added the B-17 Bomber, otherwise known as the Flying Fortress from 1942 because we used to have a blast flying that thing around with multiple crewmates back in the day. So you've got all these tools and toys, what kind of things can you make? Well they gave us some basic examples which were as follows. Do you want to see World War 2 soldiers versus BF 2042 soldiers? Do you want to make a free for all deathmatch? Do you want to make a gun game with weapons from all of these old Battlefield games plus the new 2042 weapons? Do you want to make a zombies mode? Do you want to do 64 knives versus 64 repair tools? Do you want to see if 20 Tiger tanks could beat 5 M1 Abrams tanks? You make whatever you want really within the limits of the builder. So what are those limits and how do you build stuff? We got to see a demo of a snipers versus shotgun mode being built and this is done on a web based platform. The devs told us that web based means that they can update it freely without having to patch the game and it is accessible from anywhere and you don't need a copy of the game to build stuff either but you will need an EA account. We were then presented with a basic building tool to start with that offered some official preset templates for game modes like Conquest, Rush, Team Deathmatch etc. And you can then choose that to build off of where most of the initial legwork is done already or you can start from scratch completely custom. You then pick your eras, do you want BF3 versus BC2 for example or do you just want to make a vanilla 2042 server. You then pick your maps and map rotations and what's cool about this is that they've made bubbles of maps as an option too. So say you didn't want the whole map, instead you wanted to build a smaller experience but with 128 players, RPG only, a bit of chaos and you only want it at the gas station on Caspian border. You then choose the team size, so do you want 40 players max, do you want it to be asymmetric teams, do you want to go to the extreme of 127 German World War II soldiers with knives versus one player with an M240B light machine gun or do you want the typical 64v64 experience? Next you can select what classes are available, do you want to disable snipers, do you want to make it engineer only and then you can go into that further and disable or enable specific weapons, guns, attachments, vehicles, gadgets, do you hate frag rounds on shotguns, well just turn them off. And this is where it starts to get really crazy and we've really been given the keys to the castle. The next section was insane and it offered a level of customization that I'd never seen before in a Battlefield game. And I'm just going to read through some of these toggleable and slider options here and just think about what this means. So you can adjust and change friendly fire, projectile speed, weapon damage, weather, headshot multipliers, aim assist, force reloading of whole magazines, squad revive, slide, sprint, prone, sprint strafe, fall damage, health regen, Turn the hood on and off for all players so you can make a proper hardcore mode. Disable the compass, disable pinging, anything that you could think of was there. And then after that section there's AI. Do you want AI to backfill your server? 
if a player leaves, do you want to test it with all AI? What's the difficulty of the AI? How many AI are allowed on the server? If you wanted to, you could make a PvE experience where it's you in a squad with three friends, let's say no health regen, limited ammo versus 124 hard mode AI, and no respawns allowed. And finally, this is the icing on the cake. As an option, you can then go into a more advanced version of the tool known as the Logic Editor with scripting, and this is going to really enable special experiences to be built. In this, you can create and edit actions, you can create rules, values, variables, subroutines, literals, control actions, array, you can script the ability to create a server message and notifications when something happens in the game or when someone joins. And then when you're finished, you're all done, you give your server a name, a description, a password if you want, and it will generate tags which will let players know what kind of experience it is and players will be able to filter tags to find something that they want to try. You then have the option to share it privately or publicly and it will generate an alphanumeric share code which you could keep private, send it to a friend, you could share a version of it online that other people could launch your game mode off, they could play, they could look at it and modify it if they wanted to. Is something not quite working as you want to with your game mode? Well, share the editable version of it with someone so they can take a look. Maybe they'll make some suggested logic changes and then it's your choice if you want to make those changes or not. And as I previously said, if you want to keep it simple and you want to ignore all that and just make a vanilla BF2042 dedicated server with your favorite maps and rotations and game modes, you could do that. You don't have to get involved with any of the logic stuff if you don't want to because they've got all those official dice presets there that you can quickly choose from. So keeping it more vanilla, let's say you wanted to make a World War II server that just runs the two remade 1942 maps and only 1942 weapons, gadgets and vehicles. That's an option. Or do you want to have a server that's all of the 2042 maps but without specialists? Then make a server that's BF3 era teams and classes only but give them the 2042 weapons and gadgets. The possibilities here are eye-opening. As for discoverability, in this portal section of BF2042, DICE will offer some of their own pre-made custom experiences in a carousel which are easy to find, but they will also highlight some of the favorite and most popular community creations too, and you'll be able to use filters, search and turn tags on and off in a server browser. Wrapping things up at the end of the presentation, there was a Q&A section and I picked out some of the most interesting responses in that. Official guides will be coming. There'll be good tutorials teaching players more complicated things in that logic editor with Wikipedia like pages and info. They also expect that the community will make their own video guides and databases. The old school classes are in those respective games. So for BF3, as an example, you'll have Assault, Support, Recon and Engineer. In BF1942, you'll have stuff like the Anti-Tank class. You can use the vehicle calling system across eras. There's currently no geometry or spatial editor. You can't disable specialists. You can't have multiple eras on one team at launch, but you can switch up and out the hardware that they use. There's a classic tuning preset, so you can restore some of the TTK feel, for example, from these older games. You can have a true Bad Company 2 experience where the TTK was the same as that used to be, and you can't prone or sprint strafe. Any server or gamer that you create and then spool up will be on a dedicated server that's hosted by EA and it's free to create. You've got admin controls on the servers. You can set passwords, kick, ban, set welcome messages and more. The minimum to make a game is one player. BF Portal has cross-play in the same way the main game does. Progression is enabled on custom server, but there are checks in place. So if you change too many things, XP gain will be restricted because in theory you could create a game mode where you could just boost through the ranks really quick, for example, and cheat the system. So there we have it. That's Battlefield Portal at launch. Quite mind-blowing, really. And I personally never expected something like this to happen for Battlefield. I've always wanted it to. It really is a love letter to the community, as they were saying. And the reason I'm so hyped about this is just think about what this could become in two years from now. A massive Battlefield toy box to play with. Every time that they make new BF2042 content, whether that's maps, vehicles, guns, gadgets, it will all be available in Portal. So that's going to exponentially grow what's possible there. And what else could Ripple Effect add to Portal themselves that's unique? You know, it could just be more remade maps, more old school weapons and vehicles. But if they wanted to, they could get really crazy with it and start adding a dinosaur pack, a zombie pack, pirates, 2142 mechs, new game mode options, new actions and commands, maybe even Battlefield Hero stuff. I personally can't wait to get my hands on this and just play around with it. I mean, that shot in the trailer with the World War II soldier in the BF2042 map, something about that is just so cool to me. The time traveling World War II squad, it just inspires so many ideas. And to think about all the crazy game modes and scenarios that people are going to come up with and the fact that they are truly embracing that fun 
sandbox element of Battlefield just makes me really happy and I think they're ticking all the right boxes with this. Open beta will be in September by the way, forgot to mention that. And that's all. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.